Hello and welcome to this demo for Straight to the Point version 4. This is a Comfy UI workflow. This is not a tutorial on Comfy UI. I'm going to assume that anyone watching this already has a handle on Comfy UI and uh, and doesn't need help setting it up or anything like that. But if you have any questions specific to the workflow itself, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to help out. I know I've been holding on to this workflow. It's been in development for quite some time, so a lot of things have uh, maybe broken or shifted and uh, been deprecated. So uh, I'm not going to guarantee that everything is working. I just ran a few tests, and um, there's some things that are uh, not quite working as expected. But hopefully everything is set up for this particular demo so it goes smoothly. Now, now I'm going to break this up into five parts. Uh, the first part is capability. I'm going to show you what this workflow is capable of. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Workflow is broken up into five groups. Uh, you can see them all here. Um, only the generate group is uh, active right now. You can see the group toggles in the top right here <clears throat> are showing uh, the generate group is active. So I'm going to run it and it's going to run in real time. I'm going to try to do this in one take. Uh, just to give you a sense of how long everything might might take and what to expect. So the generate group is for text to image and image to image. Um, and you can control that via these uh, options in the top left. And uh, I just activated the background group and I'm going to run the workflow again. It's going to automatically send the image from the generate group to the background group. So it works from left to right. So each of these groups is uh, its own uh, mini workflow with an input and output and they send uh, outputs to the next group automatically. So you can see we uh, removed the background there and we drew a new one. And uh, so this uh, group is for making uh, background stuff happen. Um, then we move on to the inpaint group. I'm gonna run the workflow again. It's gonna load the image into these uh, mask nodes. And with these, you wanna open the image, uh, the mask editor and uh, paint out your mask like so. We're going to turn this lizard into some kind of cat creature. Um, we're going to turn off these because they like to turn themselves back on and we're going to run the workflow. And this will inpaint um, whatever you ask it to over here. So this is the context area. The context area shows you as a window into what the model sees. So everything it sees here uh, is what the model is working off of. And now we've uh, just turned this lizard into some kind of uh, freak of nature hybrid. Uh, so now we're going to activate the auto fix group. Auto fix group is going to help you uh, fix details that uh, need a mask, but it's going to draw the mask automatically for you. So um, you can see we've just turned our fine gentleman here into Giga Chad. And uh, finally, uh, we'll turn on the uh, upscale group. And this might is going to do what you might expect, which is to upscale the image with the uh, option of saving it or not saving it. You can disable that. I tried to make all of the options here into Booleans so you can uh, have an easier time selecting them. Uh, you can see the detail here it just upscaled uh, with the model. Um, and uh, this uh, model here is what would uh, work for, for the upscaling for, for both um, functions. Uh, both the model and the ultimate. So next up, we're going to move on to the next section, which is accessibility. Now, I ran a few tests, and this demo was meant to demonstrate how if you didn't have a lot of VRAM, it could still... I'm going to run the workflow here. I just have all of the uh, groups active. If you didn't have a lot of VRAM, the uh, workflow would still give you the ability to complete it. Uh, and I wanted to show you how that works over here. But unfortunately, um, in one of my earlier tests, it did give me the allocation on the vice error, which is what it gives you when you run out of memory or VRAM. Um, I'm running this on a 3090, so 24 gigabytes uh, isn't you know the most, but it isn't the least. So uh, anyway, I'll show you what, what you should do if you happen to uh, get an allocation on the vice error. So where is it? Um, I think it's running in the background group right now. Um, so let's pretend that when it gets to the auto fix group, it runs out of memory. I tried to load these up with as many different models. So each of these K samplers, um, okay, well, we got a we got a different error there, which <laughs> doesn't didn't come up the first time I ran it. But let's pretend this is the allocation on the vice error. Um, 
what you would do is you would uh, just run the workflow again, or you would turn off the, uh, the later groups like this and then run the workflow because Comfy has a kind of caching system where it uh, saves the output and then it unloads the models from the previous groups like the background and the generate group that were used to create that output and then it just sends the output forward so it keeps the cache but discards the models in its uh, in its memory um, as for this particular uh, uh, error it had to do with crop and stitch uh, not quite sure I think we have to enter 1152 here um, by 11.52, and then maybe that'll work. Let's try it. Um, nope, still, it still isn't working. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's all troubleshoot that together at some point, shall we? Moving on, the next section I wanted to show you is iterability. So, um, let's say that you wanted to generate something and then send it to the auto fix group. So when you uh, deactivate these groups here, uh, like the background and in paint, you can actually skip them and then send uh, the output from the generate group all the way over here. And it'll uh, just take it and run with it. So here we can see that uh, it's out uh, or it's uh, face swapped over here. But let's say you want to send this uh, backward instead of forward. Let's say you want to send it to the background group. What should you do? Well, that's why the, we have these memory groups here. You can activate the memory group, run the workflow. It'll send the image to that group in the beginning of the workflow. And so I'll uh, deactivate the autofix group and I will move over here. I have shortcuts, but I won't show you how to use those until the end because I want to give you a sense of the, the flow here. So I'll activate the loop group, and here's memory one. This is the slot we sent it to. I'm gonna run the workflow, and you can see it uh, loads it up into the uh, image uh, display here, the preview, and then whatever image um, you select in this reuse image node is the one that gets chosen. So you have three slots. You can check, you can use one, two, or three. And you can see how it just uh, uh, created a, well, well, it should have created a variation. Let me uh, actually uh, <laughs> select image to image here so we can see what that looks like. Okay, and I got this uh, error earlier. I'm not sure why it's giving it to me now, but uh, I uh, will address that at some point. Anyway, for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna move on to traceability. So uh, I created these images earlier um, let's say you want to drag in this uh, image here. You finalized it, but you created it with separate um, workflows. So you're of the mind that separating your workflows into individual JSON files is the way to go, and it makes creating workflows and managing them easier. Well, let's say you sent this image through a bunch of different workflows, and then you ended it up on the uh, upscale step, and you were to drag it in, and you wanted to know what prompts for example, you use to make it. Well, let's see what happens. What what do you get? Oh, oh no, you only get the upscale group. So you only get the final step from the, the workflow because that was the workflow that created the image. So you have, you've basically lost your prompts. You don't know what parameters you use to make this image. And if you deleted all of the previous uh, steps or the images that were created during the previous steps, you have no hope of ever recovering that. Well, Let's see what happens when you drag in an all-in-one workflow. If I zoom out here, you can see all of the steps are present and you can go in and look at what uh, prompt you used in each of these steps. And that's what we call traceability. You can trace the parameters that you used and the models that you used. Everything here is, uh, is present and accounted for and uh, the 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 I'm looking at the file size in my file explorer. It's an it's 8.5 megabytes for the all-in-one, and it's 8.1 megabytes uh, for, for the uh, the individual upscale image. I'm not sure how how that happens to work out, but I guess the the the, the difference in the JSON file is really not that much. So it's it's really um, just advantageous all around to if possible, use everything in an all-in-one. Now, if you do happen to send the image back to the loop and then you uh, you loop it multiple times, you might 
lose a little bit of traceability that way because uh, you might send it through the same uh, group multiple times and then you would change the parameters and so you wouldn't have the traceability there but it's it's at least better than splitting it up and, and getting nothing at the end of it you know just having this upscale workflow and, and nothing else to work off of and then uh, finally we have extensibility so let's say I'm just gonna close these tabs over here we don't need them anymore let's say you uh, still wanted for whatever reason to um, work with just one of these groups well I'm gonna select this entire group I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna open a new workflow I'm gonna paste it and uh, this is just a, a bug with um, RG3 it's I reported it already uh, so don't worry about that let's just put <laughs> the power lower loader back where it's supposed to be um, so all I've done is copied and pasted this workflow let's see what happens when i run it so it's not attached to any of the other uh, groups let's see if it breaks oh what do you know it's it's actually working even though it's completely detached from the rest of the workflow this is because of um what's the word in programming um isolation not isolation encapsulation i think that's that's what you would call it anyway um this node here is uh, labeled in and let me find the out here's the out so every one of these groups has an in and out node uh, the out doesn't really matter what it is it just has to be the uh, the node that deposits the image the in node is what matters so this is what takes in the image and you can see here it's a it's a uh, I think it's called a coalesce so whichever input is the first to not be null is the is the one that it accepts so let me come back here and let's say I want to um, drag in this uh, I want to move in this upscale group here so I'm gonna select everything I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna go back to this uh, this empty this unsaved workflow and I'm gonna paste in of course again we get this annoying error uh, let's uh, let's just uh, have patience all good things come with patience so let's drag it back over here and then let's find our input and output nodes here uh, let me unmute everything first there we go and here's our in node so I'm gonna show you here so it's taking its input from this uh, default load image node. So every one of the groups has a default load image that's what it would default to if it was for example isolated like you would were to copy it and paste it to a new workflow that's the, that would be the input right there but let's say um, that we want to output this image over here and we'll put it in the first slot so it'll coalesce on this output and this will become the default now so let's see what happens when we run it so the seed over here is frozen in the generate group let's run the workflow and see and there you go it just automatically sends the image to the next group so extensibility is the idea that you can change you can change the order of these groups any way you like and they're encapsulated as complete workflows in and of themselves and um and you can add to them you can take away from them you can reorder them you can refactor them it doesn't really matter um, so that's uh, the final part of this demo I hope uh, that wasn't too long um, I hope uh, I can figure out these bugs before they uh, mess <laughs> they're, they're changing so many things right now and part of the reason I'm trying to rush this out is because uh, I don't want the entire workflow to break before I can uh, have a chance to have it out in the wild and, and people get to use it so um, with any luck it'll be in a mostly working state by the time this releases and uh, I hope you get a lot of use out of it or or uh, whatever feel again feel free to leave questions in the comments um, if you came here from reddit I'll, I'll be there answering questions and uh, yeah that's all I got for you right now um, hope you enjoy and good luck <laughs>